Today we're going to talk through topic number five. And last time, Tracy, we talked about what is sin. Today we're talking about who is Jesus, because according to the Bible, our sin problem finds a solution in the person of Jesus Christ. It's not about a church. It's not about a religion. It's not about a list of rules. It's about Jesus. So we want to make sure that people get Jesus right. There are a lot of ideas out there about who he is, but we're going to see what the Bible actually says. Yeah, and this is important because maybe last week you're feeling a little heavy hearted that the sin issue, this problem, that the only payment for it is death sounds overwhelming and sad and depressing. But the good news is we're going to hear about Jesus today and what he came to do to fix that. So let's start with this. What you believe about Jesus is the most important thing about you. Because Jesus alone is a solution to your sin problem. This is what it says in Acts chapter 4. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. So if that's true, if there's so much power and authority in the name of Jesus, we better understand who Jesus really is. Because the Bible says if you get the wrong Jesus, then you can't be rescued from your sin problem. So let's get the right one. So the first thing we need to understand about the nature of Jesus, here it is. Jesus is both fully God and fully man. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Yeah, there's some great scripture for this. John 1, 1, it says in the beginning, the word, capital W, because it's talking about Jesus, the word or Jesus already existed. The word was with God. Jesus was with God. And the word was God. Jesus was God in the beginning. And then in verse 14, in John chapter 1, it says, So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. So in other words, Jesus is fully God on one hand, and he's fully human on the other hand. I know that's confusing, but that is an orthodox, biblical understanding of Jesus. And then we see in Colossians chapter one, it says, Jesus existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. I want to challenge you out there to think about what it means that he holds all creation together, that nothing could continue to be, nothing could continue to exist without the authority, without the power of Jesus. Just like he spoke everything into existence, he also sustains the existence of all things. Yeah, I think that's really important for people to understand about who Jesus is, that he is fully God. He's not half God. He's not God junior. He's not almost God. He is fully God there from the very beginning, created all things and sustains all things. So that's his deity. But yet the Bible teaches that he was also fully man, that Jesus came to the earth. He lived a sinless life. He died a criminal's death on a cross. He'd never sinned, but he died as if he was a criminal. And that Jesus rose from the dead and all of this to prove his power over sin and death. Here's what it says in Isaiah 53. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. Now that prophecy was spoken more than eight centuries before the arrival of Jesus to the earth. And yet it is so accurate. It describes what happened at the crucifixion. And 1 Corinthians 15 describes the point of the whole scene. It says in verse 55, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why it's so important to understand the nature of Jesus, that he had to be fully God in order to pay for our sins, to die for us. And he had to be fully man to go through the suffering that he did, and to die and then to be resurrected. All of that for our healing, for our wholeness. So this, in a nutshell, is what the Bible teaches about Jesus. But the right information is only half of it. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the attitude you have to have to receive Jesus as your Savior. And we'll get to that in topic six. But first, use the questions below to talk about the person and work of Jesus with your group or mentor.